All right, so Callaway just left the My Goss Buy facility. Sean Toulon, Dr. Alan Hocknell both came for a visit. So it's, Sean is not a doctor, right? No, Sean is not a doctor. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> I have no you. <laughs> but anyway, so just starting over of kind of why they were here. So Tony, if um, you can back up for everybody and kind of let everybody know why Callaway visited My Goss Buy in the first place and kind of what you think their objective and our objective is. Well, uh, I would say short version, right? We've had years of intermittent communication issues, plenty of tension, and then, of course, the uh, the Chrome Soft debacle after our ball test. So I think uh, the best way to say it is they came out to kind of press the reset button, uh, get a better understanding of you know, how we go about our tests, uh, get to know us a little better and, and talk a little bit about the golf ball as well. And, you know, <clears throat> for the last five years, you know, our job, like we always say, is to educate and empower consumers. And we can't do that job to the best of our ability, honestly, without the other side, you know, playing along. Right. Um, so what that means to those that are listening or watching or reading what we do, why we say that is because if you want us to be better and most educated on your equipment we need to be first educated from you about those products that you develop and design and ultimately produce for consumers right we can test them and tell people what the data is but there are so many things that go on behind the scenes with these manufacturers that the average golfer just would mm -hmm. never know and us included right so harry arnett leaves today at callaway golf and if i'm being completely honest i think he had a big part harry's a really talented guy but our relationship status with Callaway was hindered, I think, because of one person, and I think that was Harry. And I understand why. And uh, But that being said, we are hitting the reset button. Harry's leaving, and I think there has already been change uh, in regards to the vibe between the yeah. two companies. And that's good, ultimately, for the consumer, I think. So the objective for the two companies was pretty simple. Just get a better understanding of where they're coming from, where we're coming from, which ultimately helps consumers in the end uh, get a better product, I hope, right, Tony? Oh, yeah, hopefully, right? That's uh, that's what everybody wants. And well, think, hopefully, hopefully that's what everybody gets. One of the cool things, I think, was that they really seemed to, once we were able to describe our testing protocols and have them understand the, the why of what we do at My Golf Spy, I think they were a little bit more interested in hearing our opinion on their own products. You know, we were going through the soft goods stuff and, and Harry had some really good pointers for them on, on bag design and things like that as they move forward with OGO and Travis Matthew and companies like that. Um, you know, for them to ask for our feedback was, I think it was pretty good, pretty big deal. Yeah, and <clears throat> I don't think people understand the complexity of the, the process and problem that we have to solve, meaning we have to come up with really rigorous testing protocols, not just for one category, but for 30, you know? And that takes a lot of work and a lot of dedication that everyone here does every day. And I don't, I think a lot of companies understand that, but I don't think Callaway did, and I think they do now. And what's best that comes out of this, I think, is that we want their input on testing, right? right. We want everybody's input, anyone's mm -hmm. body, anyone's input that can make our testing better. And while we think we have good testing, there's no perfect testing you can always improve. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so um, the objectives, I think, for both were to reset, like Tony said, and the result of what will happen because of this is already happening. So, Tony, tell them just kind of some of the changes that are happening at the, the Callaway uh, golf ball plant, not specifically because you started cutting open their balls, but it definitely had some impact and they readily admitted that and understand that they had a problem and how do they plan to fix it really? Yeah. I mean, I think the, the real quick version of the story is there are some changes going on at the ball plan. I guess you could probably call them uh, both process and machinery upgrades with the ultimate goal. I think probably the, the simplest way to explain it is to, create products and processes that either meet or exceed what Titleist is currently doing, right? Because for all the talk of, you know, Titleist talks about quality and quality control and quality checks. Um, I think when you talk to other guys in the ball industry, for the most part, they agree that, yeah, Titleist 
does a really good job at that stuff. So if, if you're going to compete with Titleist on the quality of your product to a degree, you need to do the same kind of things they do or, or even go a step beyond that. So, you know, the, the first kind of real obvious one is that Callaway has, has new machines coming in and new processes to center the core of the golf ball properly, consistently, which, you know, obviously we know is a problem. There's, there's been some improvement already, but that, that's a big part of what they're doing. They're, they're doing some things with, uh, to improve the, the consistency and again the quality of their mixing right so if we if you look at some of the balls that we've cut open uh really mo more pronounced in the prior gen but certainly we've seen some of it in the current generation of golf balls as well where you either see kind of swirly patterns in the core or or the the layers are different colors from one ball to the next and that's that's indicative of inconsistencies in the mixture and that kind of thing leads to inconsistencies in compression of the golf ball and obviously inconsistencies in compression lead to inconsistencies in performance. So they're taking steps to address that. They are going to be x-raying once everything is in place, right? 100% of the balls that go through there. And, you know, that's, that's all well and good, right? And, and to borrow a line from, from Titleist, right? You can't inspect quality into a golf ball. So you know, unless everything else goes well, right, where they are centering the cars, where the mixtures are, are consistent, x-raying them and, and hoping to pluck out the bad ones doesn't really solve the problem. Yeah, that's but a good point. So, like, certainly, we've cut open balls and the optical visual thing that golfers see is, oh, shit, that core is not centered. But there are so many other quality control checks that have nothing to do with the centering of the core of a golf ball, right? So, even if you x-ray every ball that comes out of there and they're all centered, you could still have a plethora of... Inconsistencies in the mix, right? Yeah, especially uh, the temperature. Problems with like the that. cover, cover yeah, defects. Too so much basically, on side. Too much what? Yeah, it's, it's certainly... Yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's a, a full reset on the ball factory. I don't think that's what we're talking about, but we're... It's making changes. Uh, they're, they're, yeah, I mean... They're spending a lot of money. Every aspect of the ball where, where they've identified that they have quality issues, consistency issues. They are addressing that, and by the time the uh, the new balls roll out for uh, for 2020, all of that should be fully implemented, and and that's where we're really going to see if they've, they've yeah. actually made. I mean, I I hear that the the they're hiring hiring lots of people to go out into the woods of every golf course and pick up the old <laughs> Callaway. No, golf they actually course. said they were going to napalm the woods <laughs> yeah. of our golf courses to get rid of the old chrome softs. But... If you got trees on your golf course. I'm sorry for you. It'd be interesting to see if you can identify which ball is going to be the 2020 ball when it's out in the woods and you I find I think they're going to make it uh, they obvious have to. for people to they know what the They have to because, because then they... Then I think you they're going to put a logo. Like if you cut one open, it's going to have a picture of Tony's face in it. Like we're better now. <laughs> you know what I mean? We've improved. I actually think one of the coolest ads, I don't know who said it, would, uh, it might have been you, Harry, said they should come out with an ad that shows next year like the old ball and the new ball and say... This is what we used to look like. This is what we look like now. And think well, about I mean, this. That's, that, that's a problem with the golf industry and probably every industry in general, right? When you have a problem, you, you sort of fix it without acknowledging the prior one. So, uh, <laughs> Obviously, we'll they're see. not going to put our faces on their ball. What is that saying? No. It's like turn the problem into a feature or something? Yeah. I don't know. It's but, not a bug. It's a feature. Yeah, it's not a bug. It's a feature. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. $50 million being invested in changes in the plant. So obviously throwing money at things doesn't always fix it, but that shows a pretty significant dedication to trying to fix the quality control problem and a lot of other issues that were going on there, I guess, due to a few things. But one of them is because, I mean, Doc Hawk was talking about the whole philosophy behind the ball, though. And like he was saying that, you know, yeah, they have these quality control issues, but making the ball itself was pretty damn difficult. Yeah, that's a great point. So let's talk about a little bit of the philosophy of why they came up with chrome soft right so they knew right away that if they came out with a ball that was like the pro v why would anybody buy that versus yeah, exactly. the pro v so they needed to come up with a, what they call you know or in the industry or any industry is a differentiator right something that you can instantly look at and go that's that company it's kind well, of like yeah, the white driver from remember Taylor. remember the uh, like blaster balls and the people why they why people liked them is because they were so soft around the green um the philosophy with with um callaway is kind of similar like it's it's soft 
Well, um, but you, well, it's a differentiator between every other ball. When you pull golfers, the number one thing they care about with a golf ball is always feel, right? right. So one way you can give that to them almost instantaneously is by making it softer. Mm-hmm. But there's other things that they had to do to do that because as uh, we discovered in our golf ball test, soft off the tee equals slow, slow, right? So how do you... That came in... One cool thing that we did learn from them was... And this is why I love having the manufacturers to my golf spy or calls or whatever because they do have a philosophy for the Callaway Chrome Soft. It wasn't just create something soft, right? Mm-hmm. Theirs was based kind of how we score golf clubs and that's strokes gained. So... Yes, soft is slow off the tee, but what they look at it as is the totality of a round of golf. So you also hit iron shots. You also hit wedge shots. Yeah, they and broke down t- like a pretty pretty good um, visual. You, I mean, you hit 14 drivers on average, uh, 24, I think, iron shots, 36 putts, all, and chip shots and within those, and all of them came into that ball that they created. Yeah, so they're willing to give up some distance off the tee. Yeah. With gaining some off the iron and from you know love but, around the green, but I mean the distance. They only said it was like what two to three yards. Yeah, that's not what we found. But yeah, well, so I that's mean, what right, stated. What we, what we talked about after the ball test, and and what we continue, what I continue to tell people when they, when they ask about it is look, look, speed is always going to exaggerate a dis, a difference. So you know, a a two balls that are just a couple yards apart with a 90 mile an hour driver swing speed are going to be significantly farther apart at 115, mm-hmm. which to a degree is why we tested it at more of the extreme so we could fill in the middle. So look, I know this is going to be hard for a lot of guys to hear because they argue and say, no, oh, this is the longest ball I've ever played off the tee, whatever. Look, the reality is Callaway, every other ball company that we've spoken to about it freely admits that a softer ball is slower off the tee. I mean, this is I mean, it, it's just a physics thing, right? It's just the way it works. It, they're they're lower COR. I mean, it's you you can argue it, but you're arguing against facts, which is just a ridiculous thing to do. So, the the Callaway philosophy is we want to be we think that with our softer ball, for most golfers, right? We always preface with for most golfers, we can keep it within a handful, two, three, four yards, whatever. We can keep it within that distance of a Pro V1 off the tee because the the Chrome Soft is a lower spinning ball. We're going to make up that distance off the irons. We're going to effectively be you know total distance from from you know your first shot till after you played your second. Maybe we're we're at least the same, maybe a little longer. And then the argument from them is, look, we have the softest cover in golf. So once you get inside 40 yards where that really starts to where it's just kind of the the differentiation between the cover and the casing layer that that leads to your spin they're saying with our super soft cover we're going to spin more around the greens than anybody else now right, that's is, you know we, we didn't test 40 yards I'm, I'm sure i'd get pushed back from other ball manufacturers as to whether or not that's true but that that's certainly the philosophy behind the the, the performance specification of the chrome right, which i love cover. the philosophy right and the differentiation of callaway Chrome Soft and Truvis is definitely valid, right? You know that when you see a Truvis, even though TaylorMade has tried to ride the coattails of that a little bit, that's a Callaway <laughs> ball, <laughs> right? So philosophy is one thing. Execution is another, right? So you can have this theory of strokes gain from T to green, but you still have to execute it with quality control, right? And it is to be seen, I guess, or to be determined whether or not this investment will work. I think they've already started centering balls better than they were. Would you not agree, Tony? Yeah, I mean, certainly, like, the, the analogy Doc used, right? You, you can't go, oh, my God, we, we have a problem. Shut it all down, and we're not going to make any more balls in, until it's fixed. That's, you know, that's perfect world, ideal scenario. You can't do that in, in the real world where you have to sell things to, to maintain your business. So the analogy is sort of like trying to change a flat tire on a moving car. And so that's what they what they've done to this point is implement process improvements as they kept going. But I think again, you know, uh, certainly what they said by by the time they start cranking out 2020 balls, they're going to be in really great position and and to be seen, right? But but certainly I'd say I'm I'm really optimistic about what I've heard and what that could mean well, do, for yeah. the quality of the golf ball. I mean, do you think you people? Know, if, if you want. If you love the Chrome Soft, right, and you want to play that ball either because you like the way it feels or you love Callaway or or it actually is a good performance spec for you, 
Like I, I fully support that, but it needs to be a quality and a quality consistent product. And right now, I, I don't think that's the case. And hopefully right. by twenty twenty, it will do you, be. So do you think that the consumer knowing this now, do you think they're going to be wait until twenty twenty for them to get the new most consistent ball? I, was, I mean, I would. <laughs> I think it's so, exactly. So there you go. So if you think that's going to happen. The obviously markets are going to go down, so why not do a recall on stuff like cars and stuff like that, like oh, they wow. did? And obviously, it's not health. There's still realities, and right, it's not. Yeah, it's not know, a safety aren't... concern. Like, yeah, this exactly. Isn't a, this isn't a child's. Uh, <laughs> seat. Yeah, there, it's not a fire hazard. There's no <laughs> yeah. risk of igniting and. But and that being said, baby, I think though. a lot of people, you know, at least publicly, have said, "I'm never going to." You, you get a, a wide variety, right? There's people that are like, "I'm never going to trust them again. I'm never buying the ball again." To the people that are probably going to wait a little bit, to the people that are still chromies or whatever the totally hell they're denying there's a problem. <laughs> yeah. Chromies. Um, anyway, what do you think? I think it's a pretty good opportunity for Callaway to say, "Hey, you know, we we know that we didn't have the highest quality golf balls, but we've made our changes and give but us that's a shot." That's a detriment to them. Like they're a big fucking company. Well, here's and them saying that that yeah they messed up. Okay, so let's think about that, right? When the, here's the difference of what. I would have liked to see versus what happened. Test oh, comes out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, sure. Someone behind the scenes puts out a really awful press release about our testing, right? To try to uh, throw us under the bus and all that stuff versus that person no longer being there and the new, not the new CEO, but the CEO going, all right, let's hit the reset button and let's face facts, right? We've got a problem. We're going to fix it. Great. You know, there was a problem. That and looks now so good on them, though. It's not even about, I, it's just what you, it does look good, right? There's no doubt about that. But w- would would they have addressed the problem if Tony didn't start this craze? Well, I don't. I don't think. And in, in talking, I will say this: talking with Alan and Sean, you know, I I didn't get the sense that they were hiding anything. I mean, they were no, very open about either. everything. No, that and, was and about I as think, transparent of a meeting between mm-hmm. the minds as you're going to get. Yeah, and I and I awesome. think it's fair to it say was. that you know when. So if you look at when the when that response was issued, right? That was one week after our test. We published a test on a on a Monday. That that release came out Friday, and I think on that Friday, that was actually before we started cutting things open and really started digging. And and I think it's fair to say that when that came out, Callaway didn't know the extent of the problem they had at, at the factory. Right. So you know, I'm will, I'm going to go like it, it wasn't until hey, you know, they really. Balls started getting cut open, and they started taking a I don't closer know. I, look. I don't know about that. I mean, during conversations Harry had with Hocknell, they knew they had a problem, you know, at the plant with QC. Was yeah, that was that communicated? Right, that and was that communicated properly towards the higher ups? So yeah, I, I, that's the that's if you, the if you think about the, the the people in the plants, dude, they got if, quotas if, to if, hit. Well, you know, they do, and if they know that they've, they you know, numbers, if, huh? yeah, if, the, if they've effed up. It's it's gonna be one like if I if I say that we've effed up I lose my job, like they already know that so they're covering their at the end of the day everyone's out for themselves so they're trying to help, like keep their own. They got numbers face, to hit. They know? don't have they didn't have their quality control standards that they could check these balls to even see if they were centered. You and know? they were growing at a significant pace, right? So like that's what yeah, they've been growing sure. too fast. Maybe yeah. balls were flying out of there, so they could yeah. either go holy shit we're gonna stop everything or we're gonna keep pumping these things yeah. out. They made the wrong decision in my opinion, but. At the end of the day, they're going to fix it, and hopefully, yeah, for I golfers, mean. I think what Tony discovered and started doing is something that is going to impact golfers, not for the next year because of Callaway. I can guarantee you other manufacturers are talking to the plants and foundries that make these golf balls to assure that that is yeah. not happening, and I think that what Tony did is going to impact golfers for decades. Yeah, right? and, and for the, for the consumer job, out there, it's... Every manufacturer is never ever gonna get it one hundred percent correct nope. every time because it's there's so many variables out there. Even Titleist, who has been number one in the ball industry for a long, long time, um, since I was in my dad's sack, like <laughs> it's been a long time since that's happened. So when it comes to not um, the way it works, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but right, there's a stork somewhere in there, right? <laughs> But what I'm saying is the golf ball is never, ever going to be perfect. It's really every hard to make a golf ball, first of all, oh, right? Yeah, but those people but also out there really are also like, really easy at the same time. It's really hard to make a good golf ball. 
I would say it's really hard yeah. to make, make any a ball to, to fuse the rubber and on the blah blah yeah, blah. Is that the blending of it? All the stuff oh that God, we learned and so know, much. It's it's just not easy to make that ball. So the harder something is to make, the more difficult it is to. But I in in my my advice was would be even from now into ten years from now. Just keep checking the balls yourself because you might find one in there that's going to be a little bit lopsided because it's hard to catch every single ball when you're making 12. Uh, how many? It was like, 200, like 250 million balls Callaway came out with or something. Or oh, something it was ridiculous. like a few million dozen. Yeah, so it's fucking oh, no, ridiculous. It's, it's, it's a massive, massive. Yeah, number so of balls so if you see you know, so yeah. many balls. So if you see a guy in the, out in the woods napalming old balls, just know that they. <laughs> want to get rid of a lot of those millions of balls and start hit the reset button, right? All right, so that's enough about Callaway and the trip. It was a great trip. Would you not agree? That was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. You almost broke the record for the basketball shoot game at. Mm. Uh, I almost. beat you first at time. the beer hall. Mm. I, it's, uh, I, I. It's always good. It was an off night. Sean, even even if he's an asshole. Who's that? Sean. Jeez. He's an honestly, he's an interesting dude. Honestly, people can say whatever they want about Sean and Alan. I don't know. I'm sure they're liked by most, but. I have never been a part of a meeting like that, that the other side, especially a corporation that big, was that open and honest. Yeah, they... And that was my first meeting some good with, guys working with for them. Sean and Doc and couldn't think anything highly, uh, more highly of them. I think they yeah. were very transparent. They're very down to earth. They obviously know the, the shit. Yeah, Alan, um, Alan's a smart guy and so is Sean. Yeah. It was that good. Was a lot of fun. Sean's a professional. I think Alan's probably smarter... Because he's a doctor, I would, and Sean's not. But <laughs> wait, so Sean is or is not a doctor? Sean's gonna send Sean you. Is not a doctor. Okay, all right, just make sure. If Sean's Sean listen, not Doctor Tula, if Sean's listening to this podcast, please send a bag of dicks to Tony. <laughs> yeah, we'll give you his address. <laughs> Email me, I'll give you his address. Just not the ones I'm from China. Get a text. <laughs> I will be getting a text at some point today. 